Hello and welcome back to World Inside with me, Tian Wei, coming to you Monday to Friday on CGTN. This year marks the 40th anniversary of China's reform and opening up to the world, which has catalyzed the country's economic renewal. Since then, China has rapidly modernized its various sectors, increasing the living standards of the Chinese citizens. Today, the country is a top destination for foreign investment as it continues to open its markets and collaborate with foreign firms and governments. China will carry out a number of big measures to open up more and substantially relax market access, promote the development of the Belt and Road, and develop the first China International Import Expo. Earlier, I had a chance to sit down with Li Daokui, a well-known Chinese economist. Uh, he frankly talked about the nature of China's latest challenges in pursuing reforms, but he also said that no one could halt the tide of reforms because that's what all Chinese really see eye to eye on. We learned the news that some of the local numbers when it comes to GDP have been cooked for years, and therefore people put a question mark about China exact growth rate. What about the picture now? Local enterprises are now given different sets of incentives. Before, they were pretty much um, simply motivated to, to have GDP, to, to have economic growth, to have faster GDP growth. Mm. Now they are given a multi-task, multi-dimensional task. Uh, not only economic growth, uh, but more important, the, li the increase in living standard, mm -hmm. the improvement of the environment, and uh, R&D, uh, so on and so forth. So I do believe that the local leaders are now very different. Mm -hmm. I've been traveling around in China I've s in recent months. Mm -hmm. I've seen tremendous change, tremendous change in the mentality of local officials. Give me an example, Professor. For example, I just came from a big, big uh, city in the province of Shandong mm -hmm. with a population almost 10 million. 10 million, okay? It's not the capital of Shandong, but it's one of the largest cities in Shandong. Right. And the mayor who invited me to go there, mm -hmm. he uh, spends lots of energy and his uh, time to one topic. He's been also asking me about this topic, how to change the engine mm -hmm. of economic growth from simply making investments mm -hmm. in infrastructure to or real estate, to, to say the least, <laughs> to sustainable investments to prop up the local R and D, mm. and also he says educated population. Therefore, the industry in the city will be able to upgrade. Mm. There has been concern whether countries, including China and others, there will be a rise of nationalism. So when you have pressure coming from outside, it's predictable nationalism would rise in the country. So how would that work eventually on the economic policies and on the way of reform? It's an interesting question, isn't it? If you look countries after countries in today's world, starting from the U.S., right, President Trump, don't you see that as nationalism? U.S. first, America first, right? As simple as that. But that has not been well received by the rest of the world, by the way, Professor. But domestically, domestic, the, the president elected by the U.S. population, right? But the U.S. voters is in, inward-looking, nationalistic. Mm. The nationalism is the trend of today's world. The Chinese government, including Chinese, you know, represented by Chinese leaders, right, are always, always trying to balance nationalism with a global commitment. Mm -hmm. Right? When, when President Xi Jinping says the China dream, he also says the common destiny. Mm, the community of shared future for all. Exactly. He always has double two messages. The two messages are combined. Mm -hmm. That is, how to make China great again. It's through China being able to make more contribution to the rest of the world, unlike the past 500 years. In the past, past 500 years, not only China slowed down as a country in making progress, but also China slowed down as a country making contribution to the rest of the world. Mm. So today's message from China, I think, is super clear.
Reform and opening up, that's what China has been embracing over the past 40 years. In fact, everyone in China has been benefiting from that. Professor Li Daokui is no exception. Professor Li is an also advocate of practice and has a story to tell about reform and opening up once asked about it. Take a listen. You are one of those products in a way, quote unquote. That is 40 years of reform and China's opening up, right? You were a Chinese student and then you went overseas, you studied there in the United States, became a professor, worked there, comfortable life, but then you thought there's something better and bigger to be done, and you came back. You t teach at Tsinghua University, you try to establish the first ever institution on a Chinese university campus between Chinese and foreign, uh, in a way, joint efforts. So you knew how it was like to be someone coming from outside, coming back, and also to be a reformer in this process. The big takeaway from this 40-year anniversary of the reform is very, very simple. That is, continue the process and let the process not only benefit the Chinese people, but also the rest of the world. Reform is a mentality, truly. Reform is a mentality every day. In everything I have to implement the reform, for example, I've been teaching a course for 14 years, an undergraduate course. Every year I have to innovate, and I told students, if I don't innovate, if I don't do reform, somebody will, who is much more eloquent, much more knowledgeable, much more, much better looking than myself, <laughs> will do I'm a not video sure what that is the standard we're talking about here. Do a video, we'll do a you know, video, we'll do the internet learning. No, who am I? I will, I will be replaced. So that's why in my teaching, especially recent years, I always, always do reform. So in my current teaching, I reverse it. I let students first, first present the teaching material. Mm -hmm. I give them VBT beforehand and that make comments. That way, I believe I cannot be easily replaced. <laughs> so this is an example of reform. Not reform by artificial intelligence. Exactly, reform is mentality. I do believe that the, the reform as a mentality is deeply, deeply rooted in China. But you also know the challenge of being a reformer. Of course. Because of course. you try to set up an institute on Tsinghua University campus, and it takes years. Yeah. And of course, you always encounter with challenges that could be part of the fun, you could argue, yeah. but at the same time, it is challenging. It's challenging because, number one, you have to be patient. Number two, you really, really, really have to think from the other people's perspective. You have to make sure potential losers are properly taken care of, right? You can imagine you might be a loser of, the re of any reform process, any reform. right? Do you feel, you feel very uncomfortable. So any successful reform uh, has to, right, has to overcome the uh, obstacles from the, from the potential losers. And I, my belief is not to what not? But Rather, they have, you have to find a way to make them comfortable. But is the baggage to too heavy? Well, reform, that by definition, is that we have a bigger pie. We have a bigger pie. We have a bigger, right, bigger economy, more efficiency. So we're, we should be able to afford to compensate the potential loser. Maybe it's a better word. Potential, potential. Uh, uh, Those interests that are being right? challenged. That's mm. right. Mm. But how patient can you be? Do well, you need to be as a reformer? In China, we have a saying that uh, 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 being slow is not a problem. The problem is to stop, right? If you keep on moving, keep on, keep on moving, you eventually will get there. Some example in Beijing traffic. If in Beijing traffic in a crossroad, if you stop, you never go cross because it's so busy. They are, they, are, they, are, they are bicycles, they are uh, passengers, they are right, pedestrians, they, they're always cutting our way, right? So what you do in Beijing's crossroads, if you, you have to gradually move, 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 right? Then people would yield to you. All right. You, if you, you run you too fast, you, you run too fast, you have accident. If you stand still, you never come across. Well, you ride a wonderful motorcycle in Beijing, so I would believe <laughs> you <laughs> what That's you right. have just said. Yeah. Looking ahead, it's not going to be easy to say the least, the professor. And China will be in the water that it has never been before. So what kind of mes mindset, professor, do you think, whether it's the leadership or the common folks, academics, 
in China, from your perspective, need to have? Number one. And hold it dear. Number one, a sense of uh, urgency, a, a sense of um, um, uh, crisis, maybe too strong word, mm -hmm. a sense of need uh, of continued reform. Mm -hmm. right? That's very, very important. Number two, be global. Always keep in mind that China is big enough, huge enough, so anything Chinese essentially is global. Mm -hmm. So we also have to take foreigners or people in the rest of the world's interest into account. Mm -hmm. We have to understand their mentality, we have to understand their interest. Mm -hmm. And fundamentally I believe that China's growth, China's continued progress will also benefit the rest of the world. Professor Li, it's always a great pleasure having you on our program. All the best. My <laughs> honor. My pleasure. Thank you so Thank much, you. Professor. Thank you.